Thai? Did you just call me Pad Thai? Plaid Thai? My family is from Korea, not Thailand. Well, that is not what I said, so you can stop waiting for an apology. Oh, I'm waiting for something, but not for an apology. All righty. Yara, Charles, Nicola, thank you so much for speaking with a scene of NBC Atlanta. We're so excited to talk to you. But you know what? Okay, so this movie was all about chemistry, right? A lot about chemistry. So we heard that um, something happened on set where, you know, you don't do a lot, Yara. You don't um, share your sweets <laughs> with your co-stars especially. But the chemistry was oh so God. good oh. that we decided to give you guys this. Thank you. Of our appreciation, Thank a little so um, so strawberry pop tart. It has icing on it, so hopefully you guys can remake that moment after we finish shooting. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. I wish it was homemade, like the Pop-Tart Yara brought. Oh, she sounds like she would be homemade. Yeah, homemade. <laughs> well, we tried. It was the best we could do with our vending machines. Yeah, thank you so much. So as I mentioned, chemistry was so big in this movie, guys. I mean, we felt it. I mean, not just emotionally, but we also saw the scientific portion of it as well, especially with your character, Natasha Yara. The unpredictability of, um, of, uh, of this movie, is that what made you latch on to this, this scripts? I gotta go, I gotta go. Natasha, what are you so afraid of? Listen, I wasn't born here. What? My family is leaving tomorrow. This is real, and I know you feel it too. The unpredictability, I think it was the honesty and the hope that we found in the script. I mean, me personally, reading this romance, this film that, you know, off of the book that Nicola wrote, which is so beautiful. It, it, it was something very different. And I've read a lot of material. And it was something very honest and authentic. And I believed in it. I was all in. The crowd was ooing and awing the entire time, which really just you know added so much energy to the the movie as it played. As you were watching the movie, Nicola, and obviously you wrote the book, were there certain scenes where you were like, "Oh, they did that much better," or what? Well, what something? That stuck out? <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, it's surprising because I think the first time, like you get a, a book adapted, you're like, "Oh, they changed that, and I don't like it." But then by the time I got to like this movie and this process and like seeing these guys, it's like, "Oh my god." God, I wish I had thought of that. You know, there's, there's, there's scenes in the movie and the way they played it that I was like, damn it, next time. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's a lovely thing to have more art in the world about these characters. So for me, it's just been, it's been wonderful. And it was really refreshing to see the topic of immigration just really be brought to light. You really um, put that front and center for the audience. Uh, but in this movie, it was almost romanticized. So you not only brought it to light, but you added a face to immigration as well, which I absolutely loved and, and, and felt. Uh, you could just kind of feel it in your belly. What about shooting this movie really um, stuck out to you, just knowing that this could be kind of moved towards a political type of project, what, what stuck out to you? Well, this book and this movie just felt really necessary. You know, I, I think if anyone follows me on my Instagram, I'm always talking politics all the time. Um, but, you know, coming from a multiracial family, I realized that I've always had the globalist perspective of knowing the humans that are affected by the policies that we talk about. Not everybody actually is able to have that opportunity mm. of actually connecting with communities. And what we know is media is so many times the first touch point for people to understand new people, new concepts. And so to be able to have a, a narrative out there that really focuses on exactly what you said, the humanity of these characters, to focus on their passions, their interests, to have two really complex humans, um, and this immigration storyline that kind of, it, that it's couched in is really important because we're taking it out of the, the very theoretical, hypothetical world that we live in with politics. When we live, uh, when you listen to podcasts and hear about immigration, it's not the same as actually seeing people. You know, one of the things I always say is like books and movies, they breed empathy, right? And mm -hmm. it's hard to, it's hard to hate someone if you spent 400 pages reading about their lives, right? Or I spent two hours watching a movie about wow. them. So, I mean, I think empathy is a thing that we need yeah. to like, you know, take these ridiculous like sort of policy headlines and bring them to the human level and make you understand that we're talking about people like the politics is personal. Right? Uh, yeah. Are you all able to foster such great chemistry on air or, or on this big screen? How was that possible to, 
look like you were truly in love. I think it was about leaning into our characters and yeah. because we're so similar to our characters and of course, I mean, there are differences, but because we have those similarities uh, between ourselves and the actual character, we were able to go on the journey with them in, what, in a way. There's a lot of, a lot of, there's a lot of trust involved, like we, and just the process of preparation and the freedom that Rai, our fantastic director, gave us. Mm -hmm. and. It, she really set the tone when it came when we came to work every day and just laid out this beautiful set and it was just easy to really walk and breathe and live it. Yeah. You know? And you singing, I mean I know you don't sing, but what was that like singing in front of uh Yara, Charles? Uh, what was it like? Charles yeah. is committed and I love it. Like <laughs> when I tell you though, because the thing is, we're in rehearsal. And you were still, like, you full-on sang yeah. for me. And I think that, again, speaks to that level of just kind of trust of, of um, being able to share those moments. Because I think just being an actor, there are plenty of vulnerable moments in which you're in your head, like, am I doing this right? Am I doing yeah. this well? Am I, am I doing this the way I imagined it? Especially being two people that are invested in the book. Like, the last thing you want to do is butcher something so important. And so it's, it's very cool that we were able to share in that it space was, multiple yeah, times. It was very easy to be vulnerable with Yara. Mm. Very easy. And it's very easy, you know, and with Ryan, just like that that, that atmosphere. Um, yeah, I, I wasn't thinking about, oh, am I a bad singer? <laughs> oh my gosh. But, you know, it was funny when we were watching with the audience last night. When I started singing, people started kind of laughing, but it wasn't like, I don't know, maybe because there's something endearing about it, because I wasn't the it, best singer. <laughs> no, but I don't it know. is. It is endearing because it shows, again, like that you are Daniel, and mm. that in that moment, it's not about all of a sudden mm. like hitting that note or whatever yeah. it is, but it's about the fact that you're so in that moment and 100%. they're with connecting it. with you, and that's yeah. what it's all yeah. about. Well, two beautiful people, a beautiful love story, and a beautifully constructed story by you. So, thank, thank you, you so much for speaking with thank us. Thank you. Congratulations again, and good luck with this movie. Thank, thank you, and thank you for the podcast. I need not eat it because I all that sugar. <laughs> <laughs>